I'm Tata Steel from Shaitpur. And today I'm here to present a case study on throughput improvement in a steel melting shop using simple simulation techniques. I mean, you won't find any AI, any ML, or any advanced algorithm over here, but I have used just simple techniques to improve the throughput of steel melting shop. But before I begin the presentation, I would like to thank Team AnyLogic for creating such a beautiful platform so that, I mean, we learners can come over here, learn from each other, and proceed ahead. So thank you, Team AnyLogic. So now the presentation content. Uh, I will start with Tata Steel, a brief introduction of Tata Steel. Then I will move on to the Tata Steel value chain, and then the case study. So Tata Steel, uh, as we all know, I mean, in India, it's a household name. And it has a history of approximately 112 years. It's a Fortune 500 company and world's second most geographically diversified steel producer. And we have an employee base of approximately 74,000 people and in, in, in 80, around 50 countries. And we have a very good reputation of having uh, industrial harmony. We have not been seen any uh, unrest or work, I mean, any strike in past 80, 80 years. We are quite sustainable and highly cost efficient operation in India, we have. And it's India's first steel company to receive green co-platinum rating by CI Green Business Center. And also, we are the first integrated steel plant to receive Deming Grand Prize and Deming Prize outside Japan. The products, basically we, are, we have mainly two kind of products, which is flat product and long product. In flat product, we have coils, that's our coils, CR coils, galvanized CR coils. And in long products, we have wire rods of different dia. The key customer, it ranges from automotive, then um, consumer goods, uh, infrastructure, etc. And we have some unique offering also in terms of, like we have a chain, a retail chain of, uh, which is called a steel junction. And it's a steel furniture retail, junction, uh, retail chain. And we have pervasive doors also, it's a B2C, I mean, uh, business. Now, the, and I would, now I would like to share some interesting facts about steel. I mean, it basically it's related to Tata Steel only. I mean, uh, you'll be amazed to know that the 50% of LPG cylinders that we use in India are made from Tata Steel HR coil. And nearly, I mean, all pound coins, like one pound, two pound, and five pound coins, it is, I mean, it has some steel produced in Port Talbot, uh, which belongs to Tata Steel. 75% of Singapore scrap is consumed and recycled by Nat Steel. Again, it is associated with Tata Steel. And almost every model of automotive in India has some percentage of steel which, I mean, which is related to Tata Steel. And likewise, the Gillette blade, blade that we use across the world, it has some chrome, which again, like, which are produced in our ore mines. I'll move on to the next, the Tata Steel value chain. So the raw material which is used to produce steel is basically iron ore, the coal, limestone. And these raw materials, some of, some of these we produce at our Kepti mines, and some of this we procure it from outside, like Australia, New Zealand, and some Gulf countries. So it is, I mean, these raw materials are transport, tra I mean, transported to iron making locations, which are basically these plants, manufacturing plants, where, the, uh, where <coughs> we process it to produce hot metal iron. And further, it is processed in steel manufacturing units, which are steel melting shop or LD shop, we call it in common terms, where we purge it and we clean it to produce steel. Further, in the downstream processing, it's like we produce HR coils and wire rods, and it is served to the customer through a marketing and sales channel. In the bottom of the slide, I have mentioned the steel making process overview, because the case study that I'm gonna show over here is basically on this. We can see over here the torpedo station, basically what the iron making unit at the top here. Whatever is produced is basically hot metal iron, uh, the product of this iron making unit is hot metal iron. It is transported to the steel make manufacturing unit, this one, through torpedo station, through torpedoes. Torpedoes are nothing but, a, I mean, a tank or a, I mean, a container made of fire bricks and steel to contain the hot metal and transfer it to the steel manufacturing location. And there it is used for hot metal premixing, some like metallurgical process and ladle filling. Then internally, through internal logistics, from the torpedo station, it is transferred to desulfurization location. In desulfurization processing, we use calcium carbide and magnesium to remove the sulfur from that hot metal. I mean, like we purify it a bit. Then we transfer the same thing, the hot metal, like desulfurized hot metal to LD converters, which are basically vessels. And there, we remove the other impurities like carbon, phosphorus, silicon, magnesium, 
So it's a metallurgical process. Basically, it's an oxygen lensing process. And post that also, we have some process, which is like LD, uh, I mean, online purging, uh, LH, RH process. And then we move it to slab caster, where the slabs are produced. Now I will move to the case study. So basically, what was the pr problem for this? In this shop, the, I mean, the steel melting team, basically, they observed that there is a potential of throughput improvement by improvising upon the existing business rules of handling cranes and other logistics system. What used to happen? The business rules which were handling these logistic system, they used to induce the, I mean, they used to increase the waiting time of the vessels, the LD converter that, LD, LD converter that we just saw here. So, I mean, there was a requirement felt for simulation modeling. I'll explain the problem in a bit, I mean, detail. This is a schematic that I have used for I mean, un uh, understanding the problem. If we can see, basically the two, I mean, this slide, basically we have two parts. The first top is called charging bay, and the bottom part is called torpedo bay. Here, the torpedo that we discussed, there are three lines. And torpedo comes on this line with completely full of, whole, ho, full of hot metal, I mean, after iron making unit. So the, 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 uh, the, I mean, this one particular torpedo contains approximately 280 or 290 tons of hot metal. So once this comes on these lines, that hot metal is transferred into a bucket. And these buckets are placed on transfer car. And the lines for transfer car are mentioned over here, the transfer car lines. The yellow, I mean, the lines in yellow are basically cranes, crane one, crane two, crane three in charging bay, and torpedo crane in this torpedo bay. The, so, so the process flows like this. This is this is the bucket full of hot metal. I mean, once the torpedo comes, it pours the hot metal into this bucket, and this bucket is, I mean, placed on transfer car. It moves to this location in torpedo bay, and similarly, if torpedo comes in torpedo bay, basically this bay, then again it has to move to this place. Sorry. Yeah, it has to move to this place, and from here, the torpedo crane, which is the bottom one crane, it picks it from there and transfer it to the desulfurizer location, transfer cars. There it is placed on transfer car, these buckets, and then again, these buckets are transported into desulfurization location, which are DS1, DS2, and DS3. These are basically three different stations. Suppose that, again, it is moved to, just a minute. Now, now it is again uh, transferred to the charging bay uh, through transfer cars. And there, it is picked by the either crane 1 or crane 2 to transfer it to the vessel location here. Actually, there was some technical issue. I could not get the video of this. That's why I'm, I'm showing it through some schematics. Okay? And once they pour the hot metal into the vessel, it has emptied it, and the crane Again, like transfer it back to the top location so that the hot metal can be transferred into that. So what was the problem? Let's understand the problem over here. The problem was, suppose I'm just creating a scenario. This crane, crane 2 had just, the crane 2 is right now at the right half. Crane 2 had just picked the vessel and the, the bucket, hot metal bucket, desulfurized hot metal bucket from DS1 line, and it has transferred the hot metal to some vessel like, suppose, vessel 2. And in the meantime, the vessel three got empty, the last, ve the, the last vessel over here. So it, it got empty. So this crane basically, with empty bucket, it will move at, at this side. And crane one will again like pick one bucket from here, which is I mean, ready after desulfurization, and then transfer it to the any, the, 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 any vessel like suppose V3 or V1. So right now you can see that the crane two is forced into some idleness. Okay. And likewise, when, I mean, so now, right now, crane one, crane one and crane two both have I mean, transferred the hot metal into vessel, and they are carrying the empty bucket. Now, it has to transfer, I mean, the empty bucket to the, to the torpedo station transfer cars. So they are in this position. And if something is happening near here, I mean, the torpedo is pouring the hot metal on the, I mean, um, in the bucket in transfer car, then again, it will be stuck over here. So again, like, I mean, there is idleness, uh, idleness in, the, in the system. And there, if there is a demand from vessel over here, they will wait. And this was the reason, I mean, th 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 this was the problem for this study. So uh, what was the problem solving approach that we adopted? We started with identification of problems that, that we just saw over here. 
And then, then we move for whether the problem is worth simulating because the simulation thing, again, like it takes time. Sometimes it takes around three, four months or six months as well because we have to map each and every process into the system. So let's see what were the reasons that, we that we went for the simulation modeling. The system operated in very complex environment. The schematic is very simple, but when you go to the SOP, it's very, very complex. So many equipments operating, with each, I mean, uh, operating and interacting with each other. And most of the crane handling, it was done manually. I mean, there was no si single control room from which, I mean, they are sending the signals to all the three crane operator. It was not like that. And handling various crane in coherence, again, like to optimize the overall process is a tedious task. Moreover, there are many variabilities or randomness into the system, like the downtime of crane, downtime of transfer car, downtime of, I mean, uh, desulfurization station, the vessels, etc. So there were many, multiple things over there. And finally, like the customer wanted some heuristic, like some thumb rule, so that the operator can understa uh, understand it and implement it while doing the operations. So that's why in this power view, I think there was a need to carry out the simulation model. Then we defined the objective. The objective, as mentioned at the bottom part of this slide, that is simulation study to optimize internal logistics of steel melting unit with the objective to increase throughput. Then uh, we started our study, the field study basically. We collected the data. We, we actually analyzed the data of past one year of each and every equipment of the complete SOP. We analyzed the pattern of their failure, MTTR, MTBF, so many things like the process layout, the pro process flow of each and every equipment. Then, we, I mean, certain assumptions we have to take because we, if we are going for a simulation, we have to consider certain assumptions. Then uh, we started with the basic modeling. Then we got it validated with the customers, modification as they suggested, and then finally the report generation. Now, uh, now again, like we started with before simulation, we started with deterministic model. So. Let's, uh, I mean, I'll uh, dig a bit deeper into the problem. Uh, right now, you can see there are two boxes, red box and the black box. The red box, in the red box, we have desulfurization station. There are three uh, desulfurization stations. The cycle time for that was, I mean, one particular desulfurization station, the time was 28 to 32 minutes. And here, in the black box, we have vessels. The cycle time, again, like varies from 33 to 53 minutes. Okay, so from this red box, one output will come in 20, uh, suppose uh, we are considering the cycle time as 30 on an average, so 30 by 3, 10 minutes. We'll get one product from out of this red box in 10 minutes. And here in black box, we are the demand is generated, uh, suppose we are considering this, as this average cycle time as 45 minutes, so 45 by 3, around 15 minutes. So here the production is around 10 minutes and the demand is 15 minutes. We have just 5 minutes cycle time, the, the uh, actually time between which I have to transfer one hot metal, desulfurized hot metal bucket from this location to this location, right? So, uh, but the problem as we saw that the crane are some, sometime forced into some idleness. So what we thought, right now, the two cranes were being used for transferring this hot metal. So we thought let's, uh, let's I mean, because the time is less, why not to use just one crane and let's see what's the impact. So we have generated three scenarios first. The first is like as is condition. The second one, we have used the crane two as a main transfer agent. Okay, th they, are, they are used mainly like transferring from DSS station to the vessel. And the crane, will, the, the crane one will just support it. Whenever there is a parallel demand, then it will I mean, go parallelly, pick the bucket and then transfer it and then come back. So that, I mean, there is no interference in the path of uh, crane two. That's why while creating scenarios, the objective was to reduce the waiting time of vessel and creating logic which offered least interference to the charging crane, that is charging crane number two. Uh, with other crane. And again, uh, in scenario two, we can see that the, char the crane two has to go all the, I mean, while uh, transferring the empty, empty bucket, it has to move from the vessel location to all the way to torpedo location. So we thought, why not to create a, I mean, separate spot over here, which is a green spot, so that the crane two will just em put the empty bucket over there and leave it. And then it will go again to pick one desulfurized vessel and then transfer it. So while moving from uh, desulfurization to vessel, the crane one will come and then pick this empty bucket and then transfer it to the uh, transfer car. So these are the three separate scenarios that we thought. And we again like created around 90 experiments where varying the desulfurization cycle time and the vessel cycle time. So what was the impact? Let's see the impact. 
Here I have just uh, mentioned the difference of output, basically the heat gain per day. Uh, I'll define what is heat. Heat is basically uh, one bucket full of steel that we get from a uh, vessel. And uh, basically, actually it is uh, 165 tons in a bucket. Okay. So uh, here, the scenario 2 minus scenario 1 says that we are getting uh, like, uh, two heats or three heats more in these scenarios. For example, the scenario 3 minus scenario 1, it's the red one. Here it says, out of these 90 experiments, it is about two lines. This one, the red part. Okay, so, uh, and likewise, so we have just analyzed the different scenarios, have been found the difference, for how many heats we are getting in different scenarios over, the this, over these 90 experiments. We can also check the centrality measure of this. The mean, I mean, the mean that we are getting in uh, scenario 3 was, four heats more than uh, scenario one and scenario two. So we observe that heat gains per day is more and vessel waiting time is lesser in scenario three. Here, you can see that uh, the scenario three minus scenario one is negative. So basically, in scenario three, we have lesser waiting time for the vessel. Again, we also studied about uh, the charging crane utilization. That's also an important factor because it's not utilized more, like more than 85% or 90%. So uh, we observed that also the improve, I mean, the charging crane utilization also reduced. Here in, uh, in, in scenario three, it's a bit more, it's more than 80. That's why we suggested that, uh, that uh, we have to use preventive maintenance and uh, we, have to, we, we have to use crane one more frequently whenever there is a I mean, need requirement. But it's not interfered in the path of crane two. So <coughs> finally, the, what was the I mean, takeaways? The, stati the, the, the statistical analysis of simulation outcome, it suggested that scenario three, in scenario three, basically we are getting at least two heat. Uh, the two heat, basically, I'll just show the cost of this. One heat is equivalent to 165 tons. So 165 into the I mean per ton cost of steel is approximately 400 to 500 dollar. So uh, two into 165 into 20 uh, suppose 400 dollar into 300 or 350 days. It's in millions basically. And further, it was observed that in scenario three, crane utilization and waiting time of vessel also improved significantly. In scenario two, I mean it's slightly better than sli uh, scenario one, and uh, in scenario analysis, it suggests that we have to use crane two, and we have to, I mean, use crane one only when there is a parallel requirement. And finally, the provision for parking empty bucket at 90, 9 meter floor that we, that the green spot that we saw, it will improve the throughput significantly of this shop. So, and uh, further, I mean, because right now we are into the process, I mean, we are doing this modeling. So the further way that we have thought is, there is a, I mean, requirement from the business that there was another portion, a scrap charging part. So we have to use 100% scrap charging that we are going to in incorporate into the model. And further, uh, in Andre's presentation, I learned about we can use AI also in this. Instead of heuristic model, we, have to, we can also use AI part. So I have to explore like how to use this thing over here. And uh, finding, we have to again like uh, using this simulation modeling and other techniques, we have to find the best parameters for arriving at the global optima of the system. Right now, it's just a part of big system. The final output is slab, but right now we have just modeled the small part. And further, using optimization to find the best combination of different inputs, uh, input parameters at various level of uh, production flow. It will again help us in sequencing and um, in drilling of the whole saw. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Any question or any suggestion that Any questions, please? No questions. Okay, so thank you. You're perfect. So <laughs> I would like to. Andrew, to what about?